Hey guys, I'm here in Alabama hanging out with the Creedmoor Sports Crew. We thought it'd be fun to come over to the CMP range here in Talladega. This is gonna be awesome. Buckle up. Hey, I'm Gavin. Hey, I'm Greg here at CMP. How you doing? Hey, how you Greg, doing good? what's up? Good hey. to see you again. <laughs> hey, hope you like shooting. Oh yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> we're gonna get you out there on the main range and let you go at it. All right. So you ready? I heard that we have a lot of different ranges to see and a lot of different things to experience here. I cannot wait to. Yeah, I'm gonna take you on the full tour and we'll get out there and knock it out. All right, let's do let's it. Do it. <laughs> So here we are at range number one. Now that was an interesting drive touring some of those lower shooting ranges. Tell us about some of those facilities that we saw on the way up here. Sure, that's where we're really the nested ranges down there. We have two pistol ranges and our 100 yard electronic range. The pistol range we have is a low tech and then we have a high tech. The low tech was all steel reactionary targets on Which range Which are fun, four. right? I mean, seeing something move when you, when you hit it, that's just, there's something gratifying about that. It is, it's <laughs> fun. You get to hear the steel and you get to see it move. Mm -hmm. Then you can move up to our other uh, pistol range, which is all electronic, but we also have some rimfire sporter tournaments that go mm -hmm. on there as well. Mm -hmm. Then you move up to the range two, which is our 100 yard rifle range that has the KTS Kongsberg electronic systems. We need to zero people in and their scopes before moving here to the main range, which is the John C. Grand range. Yeah, now I noticed you have the electronic target systems here and that's quite an investment. I've, I've seen so much infrastructure here. It's really amazing. And, and what I like about that technological aspect is how much more efficiency you can get in the system. I can recall shooting at the range I used to shoot at, you know, cold range. Everybody walks forward to the paper targets and resets their targets. Sometimes if you get there at the wrong time, you're waiting for half an hour or whatever it is, you know, and electronic targets give you that incremental feedback as well. It's like having a mega spotting scope and seeing your group unfold in, in kind of real time. Have you, have you guys found that it's increased kind of the amount of range time people can get and improve that experience? Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of the things, not only it being so high tech, but it eliminates the closing of the range and calling it cold and everybody mm -hmm. moving down, pulling targets so you can put more shooters through and it's much more convenient and it's much more fun for the shooters because when they hear the report of their rifle, mm -hmm. they can look right over to the screen right beside them and see exactly where they shot. Yeah, it really brings the whole experience to the next level. Well, I think we got our work cut out for us here doing a bit of shooting. Let's get to it, huh? Hey, let's shoot. <laughs> All right. All right, so we're going to show you how to do some, uh, some service rifle shooting. Okay, you this ready? is the first for me. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll try to, uh, to make it easy as possible. All right, so go ahead and get in position. Okay. Find your natural point of aim. That's where your body's gonna be relaxed, but your sight picture is gonna be right on the target where you need to be at. So you wanna use bone support. Your muscles move, your bones don't. So you wanna have your feet straight in line like they are. Okay. And then you wanna have a straight line pretty much of your bones from your foot to your hip, to your elbow, to the rifle. That way it's nothing but, um, you know, bones holding it up. How does and my uh, eye position look like with the optic? As long as you got a full field of view, you're good. Okay, so, so I need find to that. And if you like need to that. adjust the butt plate uh, distance, the length of pull, you can do that as well. Okay. But go ahead and dry fire, get used to the trigger. Okay. Use that trigger guard bolt release in there to send it home. Yep. Just like that. You're gonna to wanna to pull through that first stage. When you're ready, break through the second. <laughs> I'm all over the place, man. <laughs> 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 and then just make sure you follow through when we got live fire in there. And, okay. But everything looks good. You already put one down range? I am. All right. And once you establish your notch point of aim, try not to move your feet any. Okay. Target 22.
X. Hey. I'm just kidding, it was a 10, but still. <laughs> okay, not First bad. shot was a 10. All right, keep going. <laughs> That's about an inch apart, would you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. To the right a little bit. There we go. Oh, I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you one thing, deer hunting will never be the same. <laughs> I'm gonna do like you do and take a little break here and there. Yep, yep. Now with that coat, um, you know, the Creedmoor hardback coat, that's gonna definitely stabilize you. You know, without that, you'd be all over the place. Yeah. In this wind and everything. Yeah. I've um, shot with a strap around my neck to try and steady things with offhand shooting like this and it's totally different. Right. So it also helps minimize the pulse too. So you got all that padding in there so you don't, see the pulse and something like this, and you, whether it's iron sights or an optic, especially an optic, you, know, you see that sight movement. It's, I'm really working on trying to get into a natural position and, and really letting a lot of the weight on my front elbow contact my side. Yes. There we go. That's awesome. Yeah. What a difference to have the right rifle and the right gear. Right, yeah, that's designed specifically for CMP uh, service rifle competition, so in high power. So it's a, uh, I wouldn't want to shoot a three gun match with that or anything, because it's yeah. heavy. Yeah. But for a wind like this, and ju it just steadies you down. Um, at 200 yards, you'd also shoot rapid fire sitting, um, which is where you shoot uh, two shots, mandatory magazine change, load eight more, um, and you're super short time to shoot mm -hmm. it in. And then you'll go to 300 yards, shoot rapid fire prone, same thing, two rounds, drop a mag, load another one in, finish your eight. And then it goes to slow fire prone at 600 yards. Mm -hmm. um, same thing, single loading like you were in standing. Mm -hmm. um, that's where the wind definitely uh, plays, a, plays a, a part of the game. Um, so we use the, the spotting scope to read Mirage like, on a day like today, the flags are all going the same direction, really easy to tell, um, but especially this range here, you will have all six flags going all over the mm -hmm. place. So um, reading the wind at 600 is super critical. Nice. Well, should we go on to the M1 Garand? Let's shoot it. All right. Ready for this one? Oh yeah, the Garand, <laughs> I've been waiting, man. All right, well, just like the Air 15, gonna kick a little bit more though, and you got iron sights. <laughs> and definitely a lot older gun. Yeah. Um, but we went through the, the loading process and everything, dry fired, you ready to go. Okay, let's do this. 22. Right as the wind picks up. Does that look okay for my front hand? Uh, yes, you're not gonna hurt yourself. You okay. can move it back a little bit if you want to, give it more stability. That feels stable. Almost. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little low. If you need to make a windage or elevation, you're more than welcome to, I got my dope set up already, so you're good. I'll just hold it a little bit higher from where it was. Yep. That felt pretty good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm seeing the wind on there, definitely. Yeah, if you wanna make a windage change, you can too. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for showing me the ropes and kind of the, the basic uh, service rifle positioning and all that. Absolutely. This is great. Yeah. Should we go on to the unknown range? Let's do it. All right. Let's bring this with us. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> 
So here we are at the Unknown Range, kind of an ominous sounding title. That's right. <laughs> unknown. Uh, we call it unknown because we've got the animals out there, mm -hmm. 12 different animals set at unknown distances. And what makes it that challenge for the, for the shooter, we could move those. Mm -hmm. So you never know. Unknown. Absolutely. And that's what you need as a hunter is the ability to adapt on the fly, that ability to judge distance. What I'd probably want to do here is try and shoot, try and get on target, and then laser the target to see Absolutely. how close was I in my range estimation. Of course, you can dial your parallax as well, see where things are in focus. That could give you a little bit of a hint. That's real field shooting. <laughs> it is, and it gives the shooter, after being on, you know, the electronic ranges and you're mm -hmm. shooting at 600, 300, 200, over and over and over and again, you get to come here, really put that skill to the test to see if you can hit something that's life-size animal. Yep. And so we got pistol targets here, pistol caliber carbine targets out here. We've got 100 and target spaced at 50 yards, all the way out to 600. That's really quite a quite a collection of different targets. <laughs> it is, it gives the shooter some stationary steel. I think we have 120 stationary steel of different wow. sizes all the way out to 600. And then like I said, we have 12 to 15 animals out there all the way, I think the elk's out there right now at about 620. Awesome, all right, here's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab Brent from Creedmoor Sports and we got an AR-15 here, we got the M1 Garand here, we got a couple of cool bolt action 6.5 Creedmoors. We're gonna get on some steel. Hey, let's see if you can hit it. Okay. <laughs> You guys see where that hit? <laughs> I'm still trying to find the elk. Uh. <laughs> What's that? You've got to be kidding. I can't even see the target. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Huh. I can't believe that. I'm going to go for that other steel target there. Hey, welcome to the CMP Pro Shop. I am loving this. Hey, it has everything you could ever want from the 1903s, 1917s, the prize grand right here. Mm -hmm. You can tell these have actually been in service. You come in, buy one. You buy it here, and you go out and shoot it here today. Buy it today, shoot it today. That's sort of a core part of the whole CMP organization, isn't it? It's about getting people familiar with shooting, but it's also about taking these service rifles and getting them into people's hands. And Absolutely. Collectors, shooters, you can Absolutely. compete with them. You can compete, you can collect or compete is what we like to say here. Mm -hmm because we do have people that do collect these, the different models for it be service grade, field grade, uh, correct grade. Mm -hmm collector's items, but we also have tournaments that people that do shoot these. Tell me about the different grades and the different options just with the M1s here. What, the what M1s, like this one here, is going to be a uh, field grade M1. The way it's graded is on barrel condition, muzzle condition, where you can see a plus three mm -hmm. or plus four, so it's graded that way. Also, we have, if you'll look right down here, I'll we'll move down this way a little mm -hmm. bit, we actually have some service grade. A little bit higher in price, but the the muzzle and throat reading is going to be a little bit different. And you can see the quality of these guns. Some wow. of them do have the original markings on there that we haven't changed. I love it. So, and then you can even go down to some of our ones that were, maybe they were damaged a little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe they weren't in as good a quality. So what we've done in partnering with Creedmoor is getting that brand new barrel. Mm -hmm. And we've put brand new wood on these. You can see the rating on these are going to be at zero, never been fired. Yeah. So we have this to offer. We have the ones that actually been in service. So it's really, it's, you know, it's up to you what you want to buy. So if you want an M1 from uh, the CMP, you could come right in here to the store. You could buy one and you could get a credit for shooting that same Absolutely. day we were talking about. And then how about if someone's in another state or whatever and they want to buy from you guys? Yeah, you, know, you can go online. We sell them online. You okay. can buy them here in the, the pro shop here at the mm -hmm. range. We have a shop at our Anniston facility up there where Armory is. Mm -hmm. We also have online sales. And we also sell them at Camp Perry, Ohio. Okay. Where they have the national grand matches up the there. The other CMP range. Absolutely. Gotcha, you wanna show me some of these bolt Absolutely, that's why right over here. Okay. I always like, I always wanna keep it pointing that direction. But you can <laughs> see right here that the bolt action is a little bit different than semi, see? Mm -hmm. 
But one of the things with these, the natural woods, you can see some of the history actually on the wood, but there's another one that I really want to show some history. This one, you can tell has been used, but there's one right over here that I really want to show you that's got some really interesting markings on it. This, uh, this, is, this is great. It, it, it's too bad that you guys can't see this in real life because just the color, the texture, the patina, on on these rifles it, it really just sort of tells a story we've got some markings down here i mean just just look at how the bluing is gone this is this is seen a lot of time in the field we've got a little bit of bluing here but i love this all this original all this original wear just to think you know this is what people yeah, had it to, is to fight I mean, fights with it is that's what they had and that's it's a great it's a great gun and Lucky to have that when they were out there. Yeah. Hey, one of the ones I wanted to show you from what we were talking about earlier was just some oh, wow. of, like you said, the character of each gun, mm -hmm. what they're having. You can really tell this was, was actually used. It's got some unique stampings on there. And it's got where maybe one of the soldiers just sat with his knife and just made some holes in mm -hmm. it. But one of the things you can really tell it was out fought in battle. You have these deep wounds in the actual stock mm -hmm. and some of the actual really markings right there. Wow. Feel the weight of that gun right there. It's just, it, it helps me imagine what it would have been like to, to be a soldier overseas in World War II, you know? And this is, this is what you got. It's so, it's so primitive, you know, by today's standards, but, but also so timeless, you know? Yeah, you classic. say it's primitive, but it's so effective when they were out there in the field using that. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of the other forces had bolt actions yeah. when we had semi-auto, right? With 30-06, right. that's... You're right. That'll get your attention. <laughs> yes, it will, in a hurry. <laughs> awesome. Well, I can tell I'm going to have to do some shopping here myself. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm a little bit restrained because there's a lot of stuff in here I want. Absolutely. Come buy one and shoot it that same day. Yeah. Right. Do it. You can do it. We have it all right here. All right. Good deal. Sounds good. <laughs> well, that was a great day shooting. Thank you, Brent, for the instruction on service rifle. And Greg, thank you for the tour, man. Hey, thank you. I'm glad you got to come out today. I enjoyed it. I'll tell you one thing. I could definitely use a couple more days here to see everything and to shoot all of the ranges. Too much fun. It is. It's a lot of fun. We'd love to have you back. Come out and see <laughs> everything we have to offer. Well, my next follow-up is, do I go for the M1? Do I go for the 1903? I think mm. I might have to pick up some of these I think you go for both. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. And if people want to know more, thecmp.org. Okay, thecmp.org. Check it out. Also, if you click down there in the video description, we're going to have social media links for CMP Talladega and all the other stuff. Also, check out the content that we shot at the Creedmoor Sports Shop. And we got other stuff coming up, other products and features. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe with notifications. That way you won't miss all the other content. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Happy shooting and happy reloading.